Hey, Ben here, and in today's video, I'm gonna take an artwork of mine and turn it into an unfungible token. I'm gonna do this on rarible.com together with my MetaMask wallet, and then I will also uh, safely and immutably store the original artwork uh, in a distributed network using Pinata and the interplanetary file system. Now, in case this does not make a lot of sense to you, don't worry, I'm gonna explain the entire process step by step in this tutorial. But before this, let's take a brief look at what NFTs are. NFT is short for non-fungible tokens that are hosted on the Ethereum blockchain. So an NFT is basically a unique digital asset like a digital painting or a digital collectible. And by tokenizing your work, you as an artist both ensure that the piece is unique and that you own it. The actual ownership then gets managed by the blockchain. Now, if you want to know more about NFTs, watch the NFT introduction video I've uploaded a few days ago. The link is in the description of this video and also in the right hand upper corner. And now let's get to it. Before you can turn a piece of work into an NFT, it is important that you are the creator or the owner of the piece. And in this case, I can prove it because I still have the 3D file available. So it's a scene that I have created now almost 13 years ago. Time flies. And this is the actual 3D file that I've used to render this thing. I remember it was a pretty complex project for me back then because I was just starting out in CG. And I'm going to export two uh, versions of the final render in the next step, a big one that I'm going to save as a TIFF file without um, any layers. I've already done this. And then a slightly smaller version. And for this reason, I reduce the size by 50%. And then I save this one as a, a JPEG file. In the next step, I go to rarable.com, which is the first community owned NFT marketplace. And before I click on create, I connect my MetaMask wallet with the decentralized application. So I click on connect here, select MetaMask, confirm this and connect to Rarible. In case you don't know what MetaMask is, MetaMask is a software wallet that's available as an extension or as an add-on for the Chrome and the Firefox browser. Uh, you can charge it with Ether. Ether is the um, cryptocurrency that runs on the Ethereum blockchain. You have two ways to buy Ether. You can use your debit card or credit card and uh, deposit Ether directly into your MetaMask. Or you can, of course, directly deposit Ether by using one of the big exchanges like Coinbase or Bitpanda. Either way, you have to have some Ether in your wallet to come up for the transaction fees that will occur later on when we turn the image into an NFT. Next, let's click on create. And here I can choose between a single edition or a multiple edition. So multiple edition means that you create an edition consisting of several different pieces of one and the same artwork. So that's not what I want for my creation. So I continue with single. Next, we can upload our file and here we can choose between a PNG, a GIF, a web picture, MP4 and an MP3 file. And even if it's not stated in this list, it should also work with a JPEG file. So let me try this one here. Yeah, it does. I will continue with the JPEG for this demonstration, but I suggest that you export a PNG file. Before I continue, let me point out a very, very important fact here. That's something that I was already mentioning in a previous video. When you turn an image into an NFT, you must know that the artwork itself does not get stored in the Ethereum blockchain. Now, what does this mean? The entry in the blockchain that gets created with the help of smart contracts only consists of a few lines of code. And in this code, we have metadata and this metadata contains the name of the image, a short description and something as simple as a link that refers to a place in the web where the image is stored. And in case of variable, they take care of this storage and they probably also compress the image. And for my taste, this does not go far enough because when I sell an artwork, I also want the buyer to get a high res version of the image. And for this reason, we have the option to check unlock once purchased. 
And if you do this, you can add an additional link or a digital key to a file that you store somewhere. And you can then host it on your own server or you could store it, uh, for instance, also on Google Drive. And because this is still not secure and long lasting enough, I will save the high res version of the image in the interplanetary file system. What a fancy name. So let me explain what this is. Let's open up the Bineata website next. And like it is stated here, it's the easiest way to use the interplanetary file system. So an IPFS is a protocol and a peer to peer network for storing and sharing data in a distributed file system. And even if the file system is distributed, it's not a blockchain, but it relies on cryptographic hashes that can be easily stored on a blockchain. Now the IPFS network allows you to address content based on the content itself. So this means that a name or a hash gets assigned to the content. And in case the content, let's say an image changes also the hash changes. So it's not like uh, having a classic URL that points to a place where an image is stored. So in case you change the image or you delete the image, the uh, URL always remains the same. And it is the exact opposite with the IPFS network. I already have an account on Pinata, so I go to Pinata Upload, I browse for the TIFF file, it is this one here, and I do not upload it because I've already done this before, so I go to the Pin Explorer, here it is, leaving Arcadia, and this is the unique IPFS hash that was created in the network, so this one always points to the leaving Arcadia TIFF file, no matter what, and when I click on it and click on the name, it downloads the image and I can show it in the folder. So it's this one here, and then I can simply right click on the name, copy the link address, go back to the available website, check unlock once purchased, and here I paste the uh, Pinata link. Then I can set an instant sale price, and here I type in something like 6 ETH. As you can see, Rarible takes a service fee of 2.5%, so I will receive 5.85 ETH which is equivalent to $11,400, depending on the current exchange rate. When I scroll down, I can choose a collection. I keep it on the Rarity token. You could create your own token based on the ERC721 standard. So this usually makes sense when you plan to release a collection of similar artworks, and then you can enter your own token name, token symbol, description, and a short URL. So I'm not gonna do this. But I copy and paste the name of the artwork together with a short description. And down here, you can also set some properties like the artist and the edition. And then let's also take a look at this royalty field here. The percentage value that you enter here defines the amount that you get every time your artwork is resold. So this means that you now sell it once to the first buyer, then you get 100% minus the 2.5% service fee. And from this point on, you get 10% of every future sale. When I went through the minting process before, I've entered 20% instead of 10%, which is actually already a little bit high. So I will keep it at 10% uh, because it seems to be standard at the moment. And if you think about it, in case you get 10% for every future sale, then this is already a lot. All that's left to do now is to make sure that your wallet is still connected and then you can click on create item. This uploads your files and prepares them for minting. This can take a few seconds. Once it is done uploading the files, you can then start minting a token. Now, the thing is, and this is not visible in this list um, anymore because I already went through this process before. So when you interact with Rarible for the first time, you need to confirm the interaction uh, with the app. So this means that you also interact with the blockchain. And as you know, every time you do something on the blockchain, it costs gas fees. So in this case, Rarible does not charge any fees for the confirmation, but again, when something has to be uh, written into the blockchain, it costs gas fees. And I was paying $15 before. Now, once the interaction contract is confirmed, you can finally start minting. So this brings up the MetaMask wallet again. 
As you can see, the contract interaction costs zero ether because Rarible does not charge anything to mint a token, but as you can see, we have really high gas fees here. Now, there are a few options to lower this gas fee. So the first one can be found under edit. You can set it to slow instead of fast or average. So this means that the transaction goes uh, through quite slowly. It takes a few minutes uh, or even up to an hour. So you could uh, pick slow here. You could also set the gas price yourself. So if you enter something low like 60, the price goes down quite a bit, but if this value is too low, then the transaction probably does not go through. So be careful with these values. As you can see, my balance is still insufficient. I get this alert here because I only have uh, something like uh, 14 euros in Ether uh, in my wallet. So I would have to load my wallet with uh, a little bit of Ether to complete this uh, transaction. So I'm gonna reject it. And then I also close this window. Now, fortunately, I've already completed this process before. So this means that the NFT is already in my wallet. The uh, minting process uh, has cost me around 18 euros yesterday. So quite a lot. And when I go to my account, you can see that the NFT is listed under on sale because I have set the uh, price to 6 ETH. And when I click on it, we have the title at the top, the price, the description. We have uh, unlockable content. I am the creator and I am still the owner. I have set a 20% royalty for every resale and I have made this NFT on the Rarible collection. From here, we can directly move on to OpenSea by clicking on this icon. And I have also already listed the NFT on OpenSea. OpenSea is already connected to my wallet. Uh, at the top, you can see that it was created on Rarible. Here we have the title, the price in ETH. Currently, I have no offers. The trading history shows that I have created this NFT yesterday and I have also listed it for sale yesterday. Now, the thing is, and this is also important when you list uh, the item not only on Rarible, but also on OpenSea, you have to go through this confirmation process again. So this means that there are some setup fees. It is free, but again, uh, when you interact with the blockchain, it always costs gas fees. And in this case, it cost me another eight euro or $10 to confirm the interaction on OpenSea and an additional 66 euros. Uh, this is again, close to 80 US dollars to also list it on the OpenSea marketplace. As you can see, minting NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain is quite expensive at the moment, uh, mainly because the blockchain is under heavy load. I do not expect the prices to go down in the future, but let's see how it looks in a few weeks or in a few months. Now, that's it for today's video. I hope I was able to give you some insights on this topic. If you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comment section below this video. If you like the content, thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one.